Hi, I'm Eric, also known as v 47 from the Ranger Command Power Hour and the Starfleet Escape Podcast. You're listening to another great Four-Eyed Radio product. For more shows, check out foureyedradio.com. It's morphin' time! Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this Four Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. You're listening to a new episode that's appropriate and appropriate. All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Another week of appropriately inappropriate, or as you just heard my son say, I can't, I can't even fuck it up as bad as he does. Teach him to talk. I <laughs> Every time before he says it, I say, all right, you say it's appropriately inappropriate. And he goes, okay, appropriately inappropriate. And then I go, and I'm recording. And he's like, you're listening to a new episode that's appro- appropriate, appropriate. <laughs> I'm like, all right, good enough. <laughs> Let's move on. Cool. He won't like it if he does. No, I know, it won't be good. It won't be good. It wouldn't be good if he said it right. <laughs> um, okay, so right off the top. Uh, well, this episode is brought to you by Claritin, because that's what I had to take today. My allergies are killing me. So if I sound nasally or coffee, that's why it's overcast in Phoenix, mm. uh, which is the one day of the year that it was supposed to rain today. 40% chance. But it didn't. Past 6 o'clock. It's been raining in L.A. We usually get L.A.'s weather a couple days later. It was raining in my house. Was it? Yeah. Damn. But I live in I live in Phoenix proper. Oh yeah, that's we don't go out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can like the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash app in pod, A P P I N P O D. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Kevin underscore Elliot. You can follow Nancy on Instagram. I forgot again. At N. Garrigus. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't been on it since the last time we recorded. Jesus. I know. And our guest this week is one of my favorite people in the entire world, and one of my favorite comedians in the entire world, too. Everybody, welcome to the show, Mr. Andy Steinberg. What's up, Andy? Woo! Oh, my God, the crowd is going crazy. What's up, bro? <laughs> it's a packed house tonight. Oh, Andy coughed a couple times. I was so jealous while I was doing that. I'm like, I have to cough so bad. God, you guys are terrible. <laughs> my, my nasally sound is sound, it's because I'm a Jew. <laughs> I'm Jewish, That's Jew. what I was going to say about him, but I didn't want to offend yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Offend me? No, him. No. You can't. Never. Have, never. Yeah, it can't happen. Um, Andy, before we get started with anything, where can people find you, follow you, promote anything you want? Um, you can find me at uh, andycomedy.com. And that gets you a link to everything that I have, including my phone number. So you can call me in the middle of the night and say, <laughs> Is it really on there? Yeah. I was tempted to call him yeah. just to be like, hey, Why this the... is. I know, we're so. Because I don't give a shit. <laughs> did, it, did it work? Do people call you? No, I've never had one call on that. You must be caught up on your bills, right dude. What? Throw your number out there right now. We'll see if you get any phone calls no, from this no, show. No. <laughs> no, because people would have to have actually look. You know, you'd have to actually. That's what I'm saying. I want to see if this is. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Well, oh, oh, I get yeah, no. Uh, I do turn off my my phone automatically shuts down like at twelve, so no one can bug me in the middle of the night. I don't nice. Know. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to listen to anybody. True. Yeah. I mean, after ten o'clock, I don't want to hear anything anyone has to say. <laughs> right? Before, dude, the whole day, I don't want right. to hear what any, <laughs> anybody has to say at all. <laughs> uh, so, Andy, you literally, I'm going to boost you up a little bit. Boost that ego like crazy. Uh, because Andy is a comedian. I'll be honest with you. The very first time I saw you, you did some bit that was fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you. I do a lot of those. No, you, not that I've seen recently. The first one I saw you do was like the dildo on the head thing. Yeah, you know. Yo, that never took off. Yeah, weird. It was No, horrible. no, no. No, it, it has. Like I've done it and it's worked before. Uh, the thing is, okay. Here's the thing, and I, and I love this about Phoenix comedy, and we're gonna, I'm going to address Phoenix comedy. Um, I go to an open mic to do open mic work, Yes. and I'm not trying to impress anybody or hope anybody to finds me funny. I don't care about an – I mean, I care about an open mic. I care about the support and the comedy community and what we're supposed to be doing there. But it's for new material, and it's not always supposed to be good. It should bomb. If you don't do anything that bombs – you are not stretching yourself as a comic, so uh, I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand. I, I get the insecurity of maybe you see someone who hasn't seen you before, or there's some new people, or 
maybe there's somebody who might book you or something and you want to do a good job. You know what? Throw out a good joke. Maybe one. Throw out a, you know, get the crowd on your side. Make that guy feel happy and go, I'm now I'm going to just do what I do and, and see where it works. Mm-hmm. You know, it could work out good. It could work out bad. But if you're not working your material, you're wasting your time. Practice. Yeah. yeah. It's just With an audience. Time. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. You're right. A hundred percent. But so that was the first time I saw Andy. It's like, dude, he's just trying so hard on this bit. But granted, I didn't know, right? So then ever since that time, in my head, I'm like, this guy sucks. <laughs> then <laughs> I see him on a bunch of different shows, and Andy fucking murders on legit shows. Like, Mike's, you're right. You do. You, we come in, and what you should be doing is just trying out new bits or something you need to work on within a bit. Um, if you don't have a new bit, just do what happened to you that day and just try to get get something, get some rhythm going. I, I don't know. That's just me personally. That's how I feel about an open right. mic. And that's not everybody's case. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience here in the city that I've heard people, and I'm not going to name anybody. I'm not putting anybody down. But work in that same 10 minutes, and it's a great 10 minutes. It's great. Yeah. But uh, if you don't know that you can do that 10 minutes after the years that you've been doing it um, – Maybe you should record yourself. You play it to yourself two, three hundred times in a day, and then maybe you won't want to hear it anymore, and yeah. you'll go on and do something different. I, I, I'm not being – I'm kind of being a little bit of a dick. <laughs> no, you're not being a dick. You're being honest, and I think that's the way it should be um, because we do. We see a lot of people, not naming names, but people do come in to open mics, and they work on the same shit, and it comes out the exact same way. Every single time. And it's like, dude, you're beyond that now. Move on. Yeah. Go, yeah. Do a yeah. different dance. Go do grab, that at a paid show. Yeah. You've got it down now. Go grab Move another on. 10 minutes. Put that in your pocket. You have it. And now go grab another 10 minutes. Yes. And suffer a little bit. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's gonna, you're going to suck. And it, it, feels, it, it feels absolutely glorious to bomb. But, I mean, <laughs> you got to do it. I, I, can I tell you this? Can I tell you, this, is just a, this is a story. Uh, All about how. Uh, but David Tell. David Tell told me this. And I love comedy. I used to just absolutely love going to shows, going to open mics, supporting open mics, being there all the time. And I got to be honest, in the last few, uh, last year, I've kind of not spent as much time in the room listening to everybody because of some of the things we just talked about. There's more than just that, but some of it is. But um, it happens in stages anyway to all of us, and that's where I'm at right now. But I I have had the pleasure of working with Dave Attell several times. And one of the last times I worked with him, there was me and the feature, and I can't remember the feature's name, and I wish I could, but we were in, the, I was hosting, and we were in the back, and it's Dave sitting in his chair doing whatever <laughs> bitter things that Dave does, <laughs> and, he, and he just says to me, okay, guys, you know, uh, you guys, uh, work on new stuff, man. Just work on some new stuff, because I'm, uh, they're not here to see you anyway. They don't give a shit, you know, I, and if you guys tank, I can, I'm bringing it back, because really, who cares about what you guys do? Just do new stuff. And uh, so, of course, we both go out, and we both we both had great sets. We did. We went out, we did our sets, and we had great sets. And we looked at each other like, yeah, you know, we we just we killed it, you know. And we looked at Dave like, Dave, you know, didn't we kill it? And Dave just like, yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> and then uh, the second show comes up, and we 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 do basically the same set, and we kill it. And uh, of course, Dave kills it. His crowd's great, so of course yeah. we did good. And That's then, true. Yeah, it depends. It depends the yeah. headlining crowd also. It depends a lot fits on to it. who yeah. you are, and we all fit. We all fit with Dave, so it worked, Perfect. you know. And you know that whole weekend went by, and it was the last day. It was Sunday, and I was going to ask Dave a question, and it, my question came out wrong. It, it, it's not important to the story, but uh, what he thought I was asking him was, you know, uh, how do how do I how do I get better? Like, what's the next step, or what? And it wasn't really what I was asking him. I was really asking him about. Uh, if he thought New York was better than L.A. Yeah. What I was trying to get at, but I didn't say it right because Dave always makes me nervous. And uh, Dave said, uh, you get better by doing new material. That's why I told you <laughs> and the other guy to do new material all week long. I've been doing new material. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. I've been asking you all week, do new material. No one gives a shit about you guys. <laughs> Just go out there and do new material. And then that's how you get better. And, you know, he really, you know, he, he jumped in my ass and I just kind of sat there quietly and just like, whatever, you know, Dave just yelled at me again. And I swear <laughs> to God, every single time I work with Dave, I get yelled at by him. He yells at me. He finds some reason that I've pissed him off. So um, later he's on stage and he does a new joke. And the joke is killer. It crushes. And it's a new joke. And it, it was about uh, 
I don't know why it's not going to even come across right, but it's about uh, the Olympic Village and like if uh, a shot putter goes over, it, like doesn't come while he's fucking another girl at the other side of the village, but then he finishes somehow and he comes, but the jizz just shoots over the village and over and then hits that girl in the face. Okay. And he goes, but there's nothing worse than cold cum, you know, it was like, because it flew over. And so it's this joke. And I can't tell you why it, it was really good. It was worded correctly. Not like I just worded it. And it was great. And the crowd just starts like applauding. And he goes, Oh, you like that? He goes, that's a new joke. You know, that's how you get better is you do new jokes. <laughs> I, I was in the back and they were asking me, the guys were asking me, how do you get better? And they, uh, I said to him, you do new material. Yeah, that's how you get better. You come out on fucking stage and you do me. And he's berating us from the stage. <laughs> he worked you into his bed. <laughs> and, and, you know, so that's his point. And I said this, I told this story to someone else, another comic, um, I'm going to name names. I'm a name dropper. <laughs> uh, I was talking to Steve Renazizi, and I'm talking to him. I told him the story. Love Steve. Yeah, and He's Steve, one of the coolest dudes. Yeah, but Steve goes, yeah, of course he was like that. I go, do you know how many comics he has to listen to? And then not only how many comics he has to listen to and he works with, but then he does five or six shows with you. And he goes, so you go out there and you murder it, and you come back like you just murdered it. And then he has to listen to you do that same <laughs> set yeah. six times in a row. And I go, he hates you by the time he's done. He doesn't care if you kill. He just wants to be entertained. He wants to be challenged. He wants to hear something different. Makes sense. And that's when, you know, that, that's kind of like now when I'm on shows with really secure comics, I always try to work in something new or something old that I haven't done in a while that can work on again or, you know, just to entertain them, if nothing else. It, I mean, hopefully it works for the audience and it makes me a stronger comic. Yeah. But it's, it, and the reason I said this is because I don't mind bombing in an open mic because I'm willing to take the chance of bombing at a fucking show yeah so uh that's why i don't care what anybody thinks about my open mic joke and that dildo <laughs> joke is going to be great someday when i work it out it's going to be a great dildo joke Keep practicing. <laughs> excuse me <laughs> well i believe in you that it will be a good joke at this point you did uh man i don't how long ago was it a couple couple weeks ago maybe a month ago but i could be overshooting it uh where i told you after the show we have some of the best conversations outside of the club um uh, where the crowd was awful for the first couple comics. Whether it was the comics or the crowd, it didn't matter. But they weren't buying into anything. They hadn't laughed for two or three comics in. And Andy came up, and you talked to them right from the get-go. You said, like, your energy is so low, and you don't deserve to be talked to with high energy. So I'm going to talk to you the way that you were feeling right now. And you slowed it down and talked quiet into the microphone. I didn't even say anything for like about 30 <laughs> seconds and told them that that was their energy level was complete silence. <laughs> That's right. Did That's it right. get laughs? Oh, yeah. my God. It got it uncomfortable built, laughs, yeah. It built. It was. It was uncomfortable, and it built and built. And by the end, because Andy kept it very calm and didn't say, you know, wasn't overzealous, nothing. He didn't break character. But he did his act, but just kept it very mellow. And they were laughing, and then as he got towards the end to his final bit, it was built up, regular speed level. The crowd was dying laughing. And I've, look, I've been in comedy for a long time. I've worked with a lot of people. I've never, ever seen professionalism on stage like that to where you started where you should be. You took them on this ride that, dude, it was incredible. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. But two things to that. Two things to that. One is... Uh, I have been doing it a little while, so I kind of knew what I was uh, what I was doing with them because I've experienced and failed with audiences like that before. <laughs> and the other part is, no one was getting any laughs. What did I have to lose? Well, I mean, what at worst they wouldn't have liked me either. Yeah. So what was what was the worst? And I think that that's where people get caught up in is they're so worried about you know I want them to like me or I wanna I wanna crush this crowd because that guy didn't. I want to show them that it wasn't about that. It was just about the people that are in front of you and taking them on finding how you're going to grab them because they weren't all on board on the same page either they were all if you remember they were laughing at different jokes and then i even explained to him i go see that's that's this group is laughing in this group and i go <laughs> imagine if you guys all did it at the same time how it would sound and then we finally got into it where they're all laughing yeah, together. and that was the best when you explained it that he literally did he told the crowd he's like look this section laughed because they got it and now this section if you laugh too 
then it would make a whole room of laughter, and it would sound like this. <laughs> and, the, and then by the end, I swear to God, the crowd was like, dude, you're he's, the funniest person ever. Professor, you seem like you have a lot to teach people. Like, you kind of have this feistiness to you. You do. Yeah, and you so have, let me like, say this. You have a lot to tell people. Andy's the nicest dude in the world. Off stage. Clearly. On stage, he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> it's, I, you, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not... People get the wrong impression of me sometimes, too, because I, I, like, I do take some things on stage, and I'll take some things that happen in regular life uh-huh. or happen with other comics and take it to the stage. And it's my way of working some stuff out. The guy that's on stage is me, but I think he's, a, he's a more open to say whatever he wants me. Yes. And it, so I don't feel like it's odd. Like I'm not trying to keep a character. It, it's just it's just me, without with even less filters. One hundred percent. But and I I like when you do because you do bits. You do very personal bits on stage too. But when somebody doesn't, that's not even true because they do laugh before you even say it. Or if you say the a punchline, you quickly go. This is my life. It's rude for you not to laugh because I'm telling a joke about my life. How can that offend you? And then they buy right into everything you're about to say. Well, I, I usually I, I tune that up just before I'm going to say something that I know is going to crush the crowd. And sometimes I want to crush the crowd. I have a joke in particular, and you, we were kind of talking before we started right now about my son. And I, I have one thing in particular that I say about this, my son to bring this that as low as it can possibly be. And I want them to go as low. I want them to be like, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start here, and we're going to build, and we're going to go to where you're laughing at it. Because, you know, it, 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 there, there is humor. It, in all the things that hurt us, there's some humor in it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and that's where I want to take them. But sometimes did, I, need, yeah, I, need him, I need him to tank. I need him to go down. I need him to feel, the, like, it, this hurts, and we're going to make it better. Dude, you're so good. You just, you're so good. Your act is fucking awesome. Um, yeah. Let's well. Let's talk about. Okay, so you have two kids, uh-huh. two boys, Maximum Havoc and True Chaos. How did you get those names chosen? Uh, it, it was really simple, actually. Uh, <laughs> I I, I uh, had sex, and we had a. Hold on, a, now slow it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah, we had sex. Uh, when I found out I was having a boy, uh, I won't. We, I wanted to name my son Havoc. It was just something that I. And Havoc, I mean. If you think, if you look up the definition, and I and I don't have the definition on me right now, I don't remember it anymore. It's he's, cool. He's, he's 16 years old. I forgot what it was. Uh, <laughs> the definition isn't negative, but it is. The, 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 but the connotation's negative, but it isn't. And uh, havoc is necessary in life, and having a child, whether it's necessary or not, but it's going to bring you havoc. So I just named it what it was going to be, and. My in-laws didn't like the name Havoc. They thought it was a terrible name. No. And uh, <laughs> did you not expect that? Well, I didn't really care. <laughs> and so then it, I, uh, we kind of played around with some names and ma- uh, Maximum, not Maximum, sorry, uh, Maximilian was a name that we thought would be kind of cool. But then Maximilian Havoc, just it was kind of weird. And then so we were just <laughs> we we're just like going to go Max Havoc. It was just going to be ma- and then one day oh, that's true. Yeah, then I said I said Maximum Havoc and and my uh what was my wife at the time, who I'm now divorced, but my, at the time she goes she goes, "Yeah, I like that in Maximum Havoc." And we thought it was good. And we we're going to go with that. And then I was like, "You know what? I'm going to be one of those dorks like that in the 60s that had sunshine and rain and, I, and so i don't want to do that i go why don't we just name max havoc and those are going to be the names max havoc that will be his first and your parents name. hippies nah my dad's a comic yeah yeah he's a comic. <laughs> and so that that was going to be it my uh, wife went into labor and it was a 36 hour labor oh shit and, that hurts me. And <laughs> then it was, a, and he wouldn't even come out. It was a C-section after all that. Oh no! So it could have been 15 minutes. So yeah, 36 <laughs> hours. They uh, <laughs> so when they came in from the social security department because they come in immediately because they want to get those dollars from the second the kid's born. <laughs> they uh, they they want the name and then they give you the number. And we looked at each other after 36 hours and a C-section. And instead of Max, we looked at each other and we just went maximum, maximum <laughs> havoc. And that was that's how it happened. And true chaos came because. Uh, true, you can't have a maximum havoc and then name your other kid Todd. It's no. just not. <laughs> it's not fair to yeah. either of them. And so, since I had havoc, I you know I thought we'd have chaos. So havoc and chaos, I'll have that for the rest of my life. And we, I wanted a name <laughs> that could go first. And true was just something we thought was so cool. And I absolutely love the name True. I, I think it is a cool it, name. It's so, and he's, 
he's such a cute kid, and the name suits him. He, Do you spell it as written? T R U. Like, okay. So you have Maximum Havoc and True Chaos. Yeah. So what Dude, do you call? That's what awesome. are their nicknames? Max so cool. and True. Max and True is what we call them, or Havoc and Chaos. You know, but I just but think they're good with either. Yeah. Do they love it? Max hated it when he was a little kid. I go, dude, when you get a little older, yeah. it's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. By the time you get to college, you're going to be like, my dad was an awesome <laughs> dad. And when he got into uh, like junior high, I was like, dad, that's my name. <laughs> I'm pretty, I, I'm I, killing it. Dude. I, have, I have a pretty good name. I go, yeah. <laughs> true, um, because True is my, my second son who is uh, on the autism spectrum. He gets really irritated because sometimes we'll be driving and we'll say something like, uh, that's true. And then I go, no, that's true. <laughs> and then, so he's already so literal because of the autism. Be, yeah, the autism makes yeah. it so – and so then we'll just go – and we'll just keep saying true over and over. And finally he'll just go, stop it. It's not funny anymore. He'll let us have like four before it's, before it's not funny anymore. So we like, we like to tease him a little bit. So you, uh, you tell a story or have told it. I don't know how many times you have told it. I think I've heard it once or twice maybe. But you took your son, True, and his friends – to the movies. Yeah, and I haven't really worked on that anymore. I, 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 just tell the story. Okay, I'm not asking for the bit at all. Just one no. of those stories. What? How old are your boys? They're, uh, True is 14, and Max is going to be 16 in January. Oh, okay. So they're really close. They're 18 months apart. Um, True, uh, again, True is the autism spectrum uh, kid. He goes to a special school here in Phoenix called uh, Gateway Academy. So and if you're looking to kidnap him, yeah, he, does. <laughs> he gets, <laughs> yeah, you can get, yeah, you can call him get that home. ransom, and uh, he gets out of school at three thirty every day. Uh, but he goes to get, and it's it's a great school, and the small the classes are really small. There's six kids to a class. Oh wow, oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. He's probably getting I'm, the I'm best education. Enroll. So uh, the reason that's important to this story is because I've never I didn't say this on stage. Now I'm thinking about it. I probably should. Um, I decided that for his birthday, he never really had a great birthday because he's never been in a school where he had a lot of friends. First of all, he was born in August, so he starts school. I was born in August. Yeah, and you start yeah, school. Yeah, school starts right after your birthday, yeah. so yeah. you never celebrate so school. Invite yeah. everyone from your class. And everybody's out of town for yeah. summer break. Or if you just get there, you're the weirdo. You know, you, you just It's one weekend, and you're inviting people. And yeah. Sue has a really hard time making friends because of all his... Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, the school was great for him. This was his second year. It was the beginning of school. And I said, let's, let's do a really cool party for True. I said, how about, you know, and I came up with this idea that we were going to um, pick up the kids and take them to go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because it was being released. And I thought it was a great idea. And at first we were going to have the parents meet us, but it's really difficult because school ends at 3.30. And sometimes the parents, it's hard because the parents come from all over the city. Mm. Oh, right. It's yeah, and they have to pick up the kids, and they have arrangements made so to not to have them pick them up at 3.30 and then drive over to a theater and then yeah. wait around. I, I just thought, you know what? Ooh. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to get a party bus. Get a cab. The, the party bus. <laughs> party bus. Was a, a cab, pole, yeah, a cab a would, her. Yeah. A cab would have been great <laughs> if it was only six kids. Oh, right. The problem that I didn't realize is he has class of six kids, but there's three classes at his so age there's group 18 kids. the teachers yeah. wouldn't yeah they do if you invite those oh. kids they want it all invited they want it to be very inclusive because they don't want anybody to, Did get you to pay for 18 kids to go to the movie Holy i had to pay for shit. 18 kids to it go went see. from 42 dollars to 160 it's like a bachelorette party for your 14 it was, it was <laughs> excuse party. me have you never seen 18 autistic kids <laughs> That I stupidly bought cupcakes for. Oh, they're all the gluten. You can't put them on the party bus. When I ordered the party bus, I just said, I just need a party bus to pick up the kids. Yeah, just to fit them. Stereo and stripper poles. <laughs> I get on the bus. I'm like, these kids aren't going to know what it is. The next thing I know, the kids are swinging from the stripper poles. <laughs> I swear to you, just swing. Going, this is a stripper pole, and they're swinging on him, licking the pole. I'm like, you what is going good on, Dad? And then, why well, don't you do this for us I when we go out him. at night? The kids are dancing in there, and one kid, I swear, is just like shaking his hips, and he just goes, "I've never felt so alive." And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like these parents are going to kill me. Yes. Yeah. So we took him to the movies, and we loaded them all up. I, I got in a fight with another parent, mm -hmm. not. It was three people in the whole theater. I went to an early show right after right after we got out of school at three thirty, right. so we wouldn't have. There was one guy, and some of the kids were talking. He said he could hear him. We couldn't hear. I couldn't hear it's a him. Kids movie. 
it's a kids movie. Yeah. He's texting the whole time. He starts yelling <laughs> at the kids. I go, excuse me, sir. There's no, you know, this. I try to explain to him what's going on. He goes, I don't give. You, you should be watching your kid. I'm like, I am watching. Yeah, kid. There's no one in this guy freaking kid. Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I brought some. I brought some chaperones. My mom came. And my my girlfriend came to watch. Yeah, we had all people right. There. So three Still. against eighteen. Three against Still. eighteen. Uh, and uh, I seriously, we got. I, we were going to get in a fight. Like I was seriously, we were going to come to blows. And I go, I'm going to have eighteen autistic kids going back to the school <laughs> saying. <laughs> Everything was nice, but Drew's dad punched someone at the movie. Yeah, so no, everything was nice. The way there with the yeah. stripper pole was cool. Yeah. And then when we got to the movies, mm-hmm. Drew's dad beat up an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> they, and the way they talk, my sister's son is mildly autistic or kind of autistic. He's so literal. Everything he says is so funny. I love talking to this kid. So I, I can Everything's imagine. funny. Everything's literal. It is. And, you know, I, I th- I'm just going to say something. But you said uh, mildly. Or, it's like be sure. mildly pregnant. You are either you are or you <laughs> oh, aren't. No, no, no. Some, no, no. Some have better social skills. Some have. But it either co- it comes out somewhere. It's going to be right. seen somewhere. No, you're, you're yeah, right it, it, Not everybody has the same uh, issues. Sensory issues. issues. Some so, have this issue. Yeah, right. true. True. Uh, tr- yeah. My son has. He does some have more than others, but you are you. You either are or you aren't. For so. sure. What yeah. this is going to be ignorant or naive, but I'm just not educated in it enough. Uh, I'm what I'm not. <laughs> it could be. It would explain a lot. Um, what Seinfeld said happens? Autistic. Yeah, I know. I yeah, heard he's that. Not autistic. Yeah. It's trendy Very now. autistic. That's trendy. Yeah. <laughs> it's the trendy it thing. It is the fancy <laughs> autism. Everyone wants it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how to word this right. But after high school, what? happens do they go to college is there the, the, a special college smart. do they move well, like what they, they're smart but sometimes they can't go to school because they socially they're inept to to move on but this school that he goes to the reason i even mentioned the school it's a great school they're probably mad at me if i mention this and, <laughs> and say some other things but the school is great and uh, they have uh it's called spectrum and it's the after part of high school where every single kid that's graduated from that that school and everyone who goes obviously he's great i got this is a funny story i gotta tell you though about this don't let me forget all right about it. the graduation they graduate and every single one of their graduates have gone on to college or um a, one of them went to a trade like a trade school thing because yeah. he wanted to be a metal worker so uh they set it up and they so that they can go out on their own and they can live on some some kids maybe never will the ones the kids are going there i think i'll have a pretty good shot not that they all will but they have a pretty good shot i have to tell you this though because the school is great but the, the, I say this on stage. The people who run these schools and the people who teach at the schools, because of their close proximity, I think, to the students, start to take on traits of the students. And they start doing some very unusual and odd things in the idea of keeping everything equal or fun mm-hmm. or nice. So there was graduation this past year for uh, the seniors. And this is a relatively new school, and it's small. I told you there was only six kids in his class, 18 total for his age group. So only two students were graduating, but they made all the parents attend and bring the kids so that the kids would have mm. a full room to graduate in front of. That's cool. I that think is so. very cool. Mm. So there's two kids that are on stage, though. That's awesome. But then they did this. They introduced one of the kids as the valedictorian. Oh, no. <laughs> and he, no. yes, oh. yes, he, and he gave a speech. <laughs> so in this particular graduating class, you were either the valedictorian or you were the special needs kid. Those oh were the only God, two dude, choices you, you had. Are you kidding me? Man, did they have like a prom? I, I don't know if they had a prom. Holy <laughs> shit. You're yeah, not. It, it cracked have me up. I sat there. Have they out of the hat or flip a coin? Your heads are tails. No, no, the kid, was, the kid was smart. He gave a great thing. But then the other kid had to sit back there. And just He sat on the chair as the other one spoke. And the valedictorian. And then the rest of your graduate class. your valed- valedictorian. And, and the other kid. And the other kid. Here's the other one. <laughs> they don't even say his name anymore. They're just like, so, here's your diploma, so-and-so, valedictorian, yeah. and then we'll mail yours in the mail. It's, yeah. it's cool. Dude. <laughs> it cracked me up. I sat there laughing Holy the whole shit. time, and I didn't want to say anything bad. But, you know, but it was to be inclusive. It was to make everybody feel good. But it, and, you know, they should be a valedictorian. But when there's one of two of you. Yeah, I, no, dude. No, no. Valedictorians. Co, yeah. yeah. Co, vala. And, dude, that's so <laughs> It was awesome. I though. like it though. They're keeping it legit. Like everybody's, you know, this is a normal school. We do normal things. Like it's great. For two yeah. kids, for two you kids. can't make an exception. How, you what if there was one kid and they're like, ah, "You didn't cut it, dude. Yeah. You didn't, you how didn't about, make the grade." If they could have, okay. How about this? 
your valedictorian will speak first, and then the rest of your graduating class. <laughs> that would have been, you know, like just to come up and say a few words, like, thanks, I'm glad I'm out of here. And, you know, that would have been. Then he could prove it. Yeah. This is why he got valedictorian. He can speak. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, they, uh, they were great kids. The guy who grabbed both the kids who graduated, I just thought it was so funny. In, in, our normal, in a normal world without any of the way we think of things. Yeah. With our, in our thought process, you'd be like, oh, that's kind of weird. But in their thought process, it's like, he's the valedictorian. I'm the other graduate. Everything's great. And it was great. It was, it, it was a great ceremony. I can't wait for my son to eventually go through there with his six to 18 friends. That uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll take him for a trip somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll rent, we'll rent dude, it's going to be awesome. We'll go to Vegas this time. Hell you know? yeah, 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 yeah taking dude. Taking card counting. Awesome. <laughs> What uh, what's the difference between Asperger's and autism, or what is Asperger's? Asperger's is still on the spectrum of autism, and there's really no such thing. Uh, yeah, right. The spectrum right? thing. This is, what... this is where this is where the this is where the issues are coming up right now. Um, it's all aut- autism, and you know we, we were we were making. Fun, I, I kind of threw a little jab at Jerry Seinfeld for saying he's autistic. No, uh, ADHD cool. displays similar to autism, uh, similar to Asperger's. This is so complicated. Asperger's is, is on the spectrum of autism. There's different le- – and I, when I say levels, I said you either are or you aren't, but there's the levels are what the effect. The effect. And when, what they consider to be autistic is like a, like a full-blown autistic kid might not have any communication skills where they can't speak at all. They don't want it. They don't, sensory s- situations are tough. They don't want it to be touched. Mm-hmm. They may not want – they cannot make eye contact. True has sensory issues differently. Uh, his isn't is, – is, Deep or is is is, is uh, debilitating right. as is. Ma, True doesn't like to wash his hair because he can't stand bubbles. He wants uh, he can he only drink water. He can't drink soda because of, of the bubbles. bubbles. Uh, That's one, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 he's in the best shape <laughs> out of anybody in our whole family. Yeah. He um he wants uh, wanted to taste this drink that someone made. Didn't realize that because it was it was a homemade. Oh, soda. Okay. And he that came flying out of his mouth. Does so it? Fast. Yeah, it came flying out. Uh, he doesn't like whipped cream. Anything that has that kind of texture, he doesn't. He doesn't like. Dude, um, I wish I had that now. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, <laughs> there's, 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 if you, you if you could pick the parts, it would be all right. Um, so those are kind of that's kind of where the difference is, like how debilitating I guess it is. I, I don't know. There's more to it. Doctors have more, but there, no one's a hundred percent on the same page of the, yeah. what this is to, to be able to draw a line and say this is what it is. But for government standards, because the government doesn't recognize uh, Asperger's, they recognize uh, autism, that it is we have kind of gotten rid of Asperger's and it's all autism and you are you, you might be on the Asperger spectrum of it, but you are autistic because that's the only way to get the help that the kids need. And if you really get to it, 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 where they talk about it in a cute way, is that um, it's just a different operating program. Like we're all like just regular, you know, uh, PCs. Yeah. And they're all Macs. You know what I mean? That's just, <laughs> that's what. Well, it when is. we were all younger, if kids had uh, you know mild spectrum or whatever you want to yeah. say, they weren't diagnosed back then. They were just not like the other kids that didn't have it. You know, uh, some people have, you know. What's it? The apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. I went through all the testing. They didn't know what I was. So at, at this point in my no seriously, they, at this point in my life, I can't say that it's I was. It's a woman, man. You got a woman. You got a woman. <laughs> I think it's um, a woman with a dick. <laughs> yeah, but no. What they, they they diagnosed me. I said this is my diagnosis. They gave my mom, which I just thought was the is the best diagnosis. He's very smart. He has a lazy brain. <laughs> yeah, my brain. They wanted to move me up. I was. They wanted to move me up like four class. Uh, classes, even though I was failing in the class that I was in, they wanted to move <laughs> me up too, four. It's to too easy. He's yeah, failing. To challenge my brain, like that was going to do it. <laughs> but all I would, all I would have done is gone. This is much harder. I'm not doing yeah. anything. That's all I would have done. <laughs> He's failing. And I was this. Let's I seriously move him up. Hey, move him back. I was. So, I was. <laughs> this guy's in Harvard. Yeah. What, are you, what are you talking? In Harvard. Sixth grade. Yeah. Failing sixth grade. Let's put him in Harvard. Yeah. Test this kid. And and I was little. Socially, it would have been it would have been devastating. I was so I, I was so time. little. In my freshman year in high school, I was four foot eleven and weighed ninety nine pounds. So at the time <laughs> when they tested me, I think I was in third grade. I, oh I don't. My God. Yeah. yeah. Teach I was the class. So little. Hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. No. You said you were hungry. Yeah, you did. I said maybe you were just hungry. Oh, I might have been hungry. Oh. 99 pounds. 99 pounds. High school. 4 11, 99 pounds. Spicy. Yeah. Uh, that was Nancy three weeks ago. <laughs> Thanksgiving happened. Holy shit. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a half brother, uh, two half brothers. 
My dad had one. My mom had one, and uh, on. and a half uh, sister. Wow, all halvesies. All halves. I'm 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 the I'm the only one that's the Mexican Jew. The rest. <laughs> oh right. Okay. So I read a little bit about you because Kevin texted me. This is yeah. the name that's coming on. So I always like you know. And when you said the names of your kids on the website or whatever, I just thought you were like being like a figure of speech, but then <laughs> those are actually their names. That's really cool. And then you said you're a Mexican Jew. That happened. <laughs> that happened, yeah. That did happen. So you kind of belong here. Are you from Arizona? Or? I'm from, yeah, I'm from Tucson. Okay. Oh. Yeah. That, when you asked me if we could that talk happened. about anything, if everything was off limits, <laughs> that would be the one thing off limits. <laughs> from Tucson. People don't like Tucson. No one likes Tucson. I hate Tucson. It's the worst place in the world. And you know what? Tucson is great for... Uh, like coming and, coming and going. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're if you're if you're starting off in life and you're going to like you're a kid and you want to ride your bike or you want to go to college, it's awesome. And if you're getting ready to check out, if you're going to see your maker, uh, it's a great place to go there too. <laughs> but everything in between, mm-hmm. it's rough. It, it, it's I just hate it there's too. just I nothing. It's my least favorite do. city in the world. Uh, they have this beautiful road called Speedway. It's four lanes. Yeah. It's in the center of town. It's the only real access to get from one side to the other because That's how you there's get no to U of A. That's yeah. all I know. It's 35 miles an hour, and it's four lanes. <laughs> You've got to be for kidding me. What you can swear, dude. Yeah, yeah. but no, I didn't even want to. I just, there was, <laughs> it is so upsetting to me as a human being. And, there, and it, most of the roads are two lanes, and I like to call it Tucson tandems, where most of the roads are 35 <laughs> miles an hour. So somebody goes down to like 33, and the other guy goes like maybe like 37, you know? So no one and can yet, pass. Yet, yet, you, well, you think you're going to get to pass. You go behind the guy that's the 37, and then all of a sudden he slows down, and the guy next to him speeds up. And then you want to move over, it, and they never let you go by. Oh. They're just, it's. Everyone has a brain. Yeah, drive, driving is my is my the most like thing that makes me want to like rip my skin off. And yeah, just yell. oh, I and, hate driving, yeah, and that place kills me. It kills me. I'd Dude, rather ride a bike there. It was Christmas Eve. I don't remember what year it was, but I was on the freeway, and this was in Los Angeles, which already has the worst freeways ever, right? And I was driving fine, going home. Driving fine. I had like four more exits to go till I got off the freeway. So at that point, it's like, please God, <laughs> like he's, that. Literally, you start praying, please God, <laughs> just don't let any traffic happen from now until my exit. And then all of a sudden, red lights up in front of me. Stop. It comes to a complete stop, dude. I was on the freeway for three hours without moving, oh, without moving. I couldn't handle that. There was an accident. Somebody died. So they had oh, a real, yeah. real shittier Christmas Eve than I did, yeah. <laughs> dude. For three hours, they had to funnel everyone off of the freeway. Like, I think it was like two exits up. So you couldn't even get off at the one. Like, it was, dude, it was awful. It was fucking awful. LA's stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know so what? But dumb. at least they'll let you in in LA. They'll let you in the lane. Mostly. Kind of. Kind of, but everybody's used to it. No one, and they don't drive 80, like in, I'm, I'm talking to like Hollywood area. They don't drive 80 miles an hour. No, they don't. They drive like a speed that they can actually stop. And <laughs> if you need to get in so that you can, they actually let you do it. Where, That's true. But it's still miserable to like drive 20 feet and then stop and then drive 20 feet and stop. <laughs> yeah. Which is the way it is here, man. And it's God, little by little Phoenix is turning into Los Angeles and it's scaring the shit mm-hmm. out of me because I don't want to live in Los Angeles ever again. But man, it is getting really crowded here. There's like no traffic between what eleven and two. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you can drive on the freeways no Except problem. Except right now because all the snowbirds are here. Oh, that's right. Oh, and it rained a little today, I guess. Worst. So. <laughs> oh, the worst. <laughs> oh, it oh, it's all over. But we have the worst uh, drainage system ever. Like LA's is really bad, where it just floods. But this, I mean, it floods nonstop here. It Every rains, time. but it's, it's the dumbest shit. Water. There's a couple areas around town that I've been in that says, if water is at this level, don't go forward, right? Because it's going to come into this huge flooded ditch. Yeah. But you can't turn around by the time you see it. Right. So it's like, cool, I'll just sit here and wait till the morning. What am I supposed to do? Take your chances. Float I have. Across. And I did. I Oregon trailed it. <laughs> just you went right across. It, yeah. Or you ferried it. <laughs> oh, I loved the Oregon Trail. That was the best game. It was like the first computer game that I played. It was it was great. It was good. I named all my characters Nancy and just watched them die. <laughs> Wait, did you put my, my rations on? <laughs> 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 what the one with the rations? It was like. <laughs> I don't know. I never beat it. I never, something. ever beat it. Oh, I did. 
Because they were like, it, dude, Stephanie her, has though. a broken arm. I'm like, all right, fucking man up. And they're like, oh, <laughs> Stephanie died a day later because yep. you didn't tend to it. And all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or poisonous berries. You get poisonous berries or something. Yeah. I don't know. So long ago. Bullshit. Okay, so I also read that you were involved on the Food Network. Uh, I worked in the restaurant business for a long time, so I've been filmed a few times for different restaurants that I've had things to do with on the Food Network. All right, this is cool. Because I can't work in the food industry. I've I'm tried. awful. I've tried. You have? Yeah. A few How? times. I've had a couple restaurant jobs. My extent of the food industry, I worked at Einstein Bagels for a little bit, and I sucked. <laughs> that is not real food. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> dude. It sucked. My first job was, horrible. was Ahu Owls, a real staple of Arizona. Yeah. Were you a server? Hell <laughs> oh, no. All right. You were a hostess? Yeah. You just didn't know how to seat people? Nope. <laughs> Bullshit. No. That's the easiest job in the Have world. Have you ever eaten an Ajo House? Yeah. Yeah, you swell up after you eat an Ajo House from all the <laughs> salt that they put in it. I swear to God, mm-hmm. like my joint, it, like it hurts after you eat there. The food's good. Yeah. But afterwards, you're like, oh my God, my fingers, I can't even like <laughs> shut my hands. And like most restaurants I've worked at, once you work there, you don't need to go eat there anymore. You're just like, eh, I'm good. Even Is that true with great. you, with the places you've worked at? No. You know what? I, I've been very lucky, and I've worked at some, uh, I've worked at some smaller restaurants, Um I Where they I, wash their hands before they, they, wa- they wash their hands and they're they're chef driven. I worked at a larger restaurant too. I, I worked at Raw uh, Sushi. Ooh, I love Raw. And yeah. uh, should I still love Raw? Yeah, no, they do a, they do a great right. job and all their, their their chefs are good. Crunchy uh, calamari roll. I don't think that you should eat. Uh, I, I'm I'm a little mental. I think that uh, the uh, the the nuclear. I can't say that word, so I'm just going to say it. the ra- radiation coming from uh, okay. Japan is leaking into the ocean and it is uh, fish is bad right now. Fish is really I've bad. Heard that. I've uh, there's right. more uh, on, the, on the bottom of the ocean. There's more um, layers. The very the, bottom of the ocean. How well, far deep is that? Uh, no one even knows. <laughs> in the in the, the the footing of the ocean around uh, right. cities, there is uh, just dead fish, and um, and that's what we're collecting. Stick with river cat. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 No, there is, it's just not a good time, and, and you know we're. I'm not going to say we're killing. I'm not going to go that, you know, we, we probably have at least a generation or two before people start getting third eyes. But, um, <laughs> it, it's, but don't it, worry, it won't affect it, us. Would yeah, you want your third eye in the front or the back? Yeah. Oh, the back. Yeah. 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 You want to know who's coming? I'll go back all the time. Yes. I like I I, I have an eye in the back of my I know head. head. I feel guilty, though, having kids in, in, in this. Really? Yeah, I do. I do. I feel no. guilty. Yeah, I feel I like got to keep happy. that family name. I feel like I'm leaving them in a. They don't know any different. No, all our kids. They're cleaning up after us. No, I don't think they can clean up. I, I, I really don't think we can. I think we've. I think it's we've gonna. It. They're gonna be fine. It's wah, the kids, wah. kids, kids that eventually. I think they're just. You won't even know those kids, so don't yeah. worry. I know. Yeah. I'm not gonna be around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be dead from the radiation. We're gonna be laughing fish. our ass off up in heaven. <laughs> well, yeah. wherever we're at. <laughs> Look at all your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they can see us from down there <laughs> with all those eyes. <laughs> They'll have satellites in heaven by that time. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah, that my extent of the food industry as far as working Einstein's bagels. Was Chompies. Awful. It's a rite of passage. Not Chompies, Einstein's. Whatever. I wasn't straight oh, to. Oh, God. It, it is so Einstein's. different. Einstein's are like rolls that they just heat up. I like that place. <laughs> they're, good, they're, they're not real ba- those no. are bagels. Oh, I just like Well, they're their frozen, food. too. It's not yeah. even like, like cooked from legit. Oh, I still I still like Einstein's. I, I go there. Uh, but working in the food industry, do you have, and don't name names, no restaurants, nothing, but I want to hear some funny fucking stories. If you have any horror stories from cooks doing something or like this shit that you see on TV and movies, I think really happens. I'm going to be really honest with you and tell you that shit does not happen. You're lying. It doesn't. It, I, mean, it, it, I mean, obviously it has happened. I think it would happen more in fast food, not in oh, like restaurants. Because yeah. they don't care. Yeah, because you're hiring someone that's in high a high school kid or like you know, right, or someone who's working for eight dollars an hour who's pretty pissed off. But in in, in restaurants, I have never ever seen it happen. Okay, wait, that's not here. We go. <laughs> All right, sorry. I will tell you that not at any restaurants I worked at recently. Okay, no names. Keep it going. No, but there is a five second rule that I've seen happen. <laughs> That's the worst I've ever seen. And you know, I'm going to be honest. <coughs> Excuse me. I would aid it too. 
So I no yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Five seconds. Five seconds. It if it fell, it, I it, it slid, happens in yeah. my house. Just kidding. You eat my food sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I've seen the five second rule been applied before. I've seen that happen one hey, time. Hey, well, you know, you're not a germaphobe, so that's a positive thing. I, I'm, I'm a little. Cross that off your I, list. But I understand how it works. So like, okay, so like if <laughs> something fell down, <laughs> and you threw it in the fryer. What was it? Oh. Uh, it was. It honestly it was. Uh, I can't tell you what it is because if I do, they like a nugget. Uh, okay. Let's just okay. Say it was no, no, that's cool. Yeah. It, but it, it, honestly, it would. It wouldn't have harmed anybody. It got. It's got heated back up. There is. And, and if you, if I would have made those people wait for that food any longer, that would have harmed me. And <laughs> this is what I always think. Like I'll drop shit on the floor sometimes when I'm cooking or whatever, and my kids want fruit and like blueberries fall on the floor. I'm like, oh my god, it fell on the floor. Throw it away. Blueberries started on the floor. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe they're a tree. I don't know. But a lot of food starts on Listen, the floor. The pesticide, the pesticides that they spray over your food are way worse for you than anything that you right. can have on that floor. So if you're putting it in a fryer, you're really cooking off all that all, gross stuff. All but of it anyway. Just, you know, like let's say I'm cooking or cutting up fruit and it falls on the floor. Like it really started on the dirt floor with dirt on it. You just wash it off. It's your, it's your uh, uh, ready to serve food that you just have to be careful with. And then people, that, that's the food that you serve. At temperature out of the refrigerator that does it like sushi that you're, you're i mean that you're eating that that's yeah. what you're eating and it's not yeah. getting any process to make it so that has to be really clean but I, i'm telling you if something fell down and i grabbed it and it was if it just fell gently <laughs> and i grabbed it within a tenth of a second yeah. there's nothing wrong with that i'm gonna i i would still eat that I, I would because eat. it's still being cooked. But do, still being cooked. Do you yeah. see my point where it's you, like if you saw fruit in a handful of dirt, sort of fruit sitting in dirt, would you go, "Ooh, gross, dirty. I'm not going to eat that." Yeah. No. Well, but if you I've watched it, Naked yeah. and Afraid. The dirt. No. People get sick from drinking water. Okay. <laughs> You're really sick. If you really yeah. if if you really get into understanding your food, if you really work in this in first of all, aged beef. You know what aged beef is, right? Mm-mm. Aged it's beef like, is what, it's like 13 year old. Right? Have they been no, bar mitzvah? No, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've been, they've been it's it's meat that's rotted on the outside. Gross. And then they cut off that part, and inside is the aged part of the beef. Uh, when you buy che- when you eat cheese, your cheese is bad cheese. on the outside. Havarti? Uh, no, no, that one's safe. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you this: if you have a big block of Harvard, Harvardi, Harvardi, and yeah, okay. and, uh, and, yeah and they uh, they throw it in, and it gets uh, a mold on the outside. They're just going to cut that mold that's off. A Hell yeah, they though, will. Because it's not. Um, Cheese gets moldy. I don't, I don't eat meat, so this is lost on me. You do, too, eat I meat. Do when do I, I ever eat meat? I don't know. <laughs> Either way. I don't know you well enough to tell no, you. No, I know. I, I, and the, the comic answer was way too easy and happy, <laughs> so we don't just left it. I don't offend No, I no it wasn't about offending. It was to just get it was, stupid reactions. It was, it was, it was just been, me. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I just don't have a problem with that. I mean, I, I would have a bigger problem throwing away something that would be wasted like that. Now, at my home, I'm talking about in a restaurant. Yeah, you got to keep it. You got to keep it inventory. You, know, you got to keep it nice, and you can't. You can't do that. that. Was that was an extreme that I saw that one time happen? But it doesn't happen. No one's putting things on there. No one's coughing on your food or like spitting on. Because because look at fires, nice right? Restaurants. When you're a chef in a nice restaurant, you that's it, it, what you it's wanted yeah. to do. It looks that's bad on you. Good call. You... Yeah, but when you're working at McDonald's. You're, yeah, just, no you're not a cares. chef. Yeah, the, it's, <laughs> the, the, the fucking the clown's getting the, uh, the attitude for that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, I've always wanted to be a chef. I should probably start at McDonald's yes, and then work no my chef. way up, right? No chef. <laughs> now, do you participate in cooking? you like to cook? Or? I, I, I can cook. I don't cook. I haven't cooked in years, like professionally. So your interest in restaurants and stuff like that is? is to get money out of it. I don't, I don't really enjoy the restaurant business okay. the same way that I used to. I used to want... I used to love the restaurant business. Really, it's a great business. It's so Me stressful. Too, it is. Really it, it is too stressful. Care a lot about it. I, I, when I decided to do comedy for reals, for realsies. <laughs> always says, I knew you were going there yeah. too. Like, for realsies. Uh, everything else kind of just. Everything else is just a means to an end, so they can continue to do comedy. I, I don't really care about that. I really, I, I can't. This, uh, I just quit my job. I don't know. I don't oh, know, you did? Yeah, I quit working at. No, I, I didn't was know. working at a great breakfast place that never would drop anything. Which on the brought a server. ton of material. Yeah. too. it was hilarious. Well, too. it brought. It's a lot of angry material. Yeah, uh, but it's so funny because everybody can relate, even if they are that person, person. you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and you know what? I, I've changed it recently since I quit. Even even though I was still working there as of last week, but even this weekend when I did the joke, I did it as as. Uh, 
I've had a lot of jobs instead of. Oh, okay. And I changed around and said, and it the, worked. Yeah, it worked. And says, and I say the problem is you guys. I, I, I tell them, um, <laughs> but yeah, I quit that job because it was just I want like I love the, I love the people that I work for. Yeah. And I love the I do love the restaurant business too. I like what we do, and it was causing me too much stress. I was like putting too much time into that, not enough time into comedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, after this last year of doing it for almost a year of being responsible for, the, did you? Are you? Is it, did you open a bottle? Or yeah, did you, uh, I was, it was a little bit. It, of both. Yeah, it was. It was a bottle, guys. That was a bottle. Uh, if anybody starts coughing or we start crying. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it, it was it was too much for me. I, I still I still appreciate the business and what a restaurant means. I, I really love it's food. It's such itself. a high stress environment, and that's why you know I've had jobs in restaurants a few, and it's the only environment I've ever been in in an in, as an employment that you can just yell at people, and it's okay to just to scream at people. No, I'm not and allowed to. I <laughs> decided the last time I was in a restaurant business, which was a couple years ago. I was, I'm too old to get yelled at. I don't fucking care to be yelled at anymore i'm 34 years old i don't want to be yelled at that's how i felt i was like i'm done with this yeah you're, you're right but i i was i, I have and yeah. everybody runs around mad at each other just running around fast and everyone's pissed off at each other well it's hectic and we're all dealing with you know people right. the, the funniest thing is that i i and this helped me out a lot that when one of the guys that i worked with at the breakfast place that i worked at he uh, worked part-time and he was a uh, uh, a fireman and he would just work at this pace. It was an even pace. He got his stuff done. He made money. He just really didn't give a shit, though. Like, and he, he, he did his job well. Just didn't give a shit. Someone got mad. He didn't care. If somebody, whatever, you know, the food didn't come out. It was 20 minutes. It was 30 minutes. He didn't give a shit. And I was like, how do you not care? He goes, um, I pulled a little girl, a dead little girl out of a house. Oh, shit. That's all you got to say, uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I put life in perspective at that point. Yeah. Way. You know, that's what I do for a living, you know, like the the how she she died. She um you know, he couldn't resuscitate her. Right. Um she from carbon dioxide from the fire, whatever, he couldn't resuscitate her. And he goes, uh and so I had to like try to save her and then I had to call it in and she was dead and she goes, So uh I don't give a shit if someone doesn't get the eggs the way they want them. <laughs> I like and that. yeah, Dude, you know and, that puts and, it yeah. in perspective. Sure. Yeah. But to the, the other, was, but to the other part, 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 the person who's sitting at the table, and, and I'm not saying that they, you know, I can't look at that person who didn't get the eggs that they wanted. He goes, "Hey, little girls die." I, you know, that that's not going to get you what you where you need to go. But what I what I will tell you is, the reason people are like that about their food at a restaurant, two reasons. One is I feel like restaurants have bent over backwards because it's such a competitive business now to give the customer anything they want, and the customer. They always want to say the customer's right. The customer is very seldom right. Yeah. We're just going to appease them. You guys, if you're a customer in a restaurant and you're listening to this, you're probably fucking wrong, okay? Because <laughs> you are. But here's the thing that you do know about going to a restaurant. Everywhere else in life, you do not get what you want. Every, no matter where you go, you do right. not get what you want. If you went to the bank and you deposited $100, and then the bank called you later that day or sent you an email or whatever and said, you show that we show a hundred dollar deposit went in, but we only see ten dollars from you. We are going to audit your audit it, and it can take anywhere from three to seven days to audit your account to tell you if you have ten or hundred dollars. Uh -huh. There's nothing you can do about it. The bank doesn't give a shit. Yeah, You're right. They, they don't care. That's your money. That's they're a service industry, but they don't give a shit because they don't have to. Yeah. So the one time, and all, think about it: if your car doesn't work right, well, it's your, you know, you, I don't know, your your flex capacitor wasn't working. Correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because so, it's the future. Yeah, yeah, it's for the future. <laughs> so whatever they want to tell you, Marty. you have to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you see? Your mechanic's you, yeah. a doctor. Yeah. But when you go in and you say, hey, I want this, I, I, I told you no onions. And whether you said no onions or not. Well, okay. That's your, your, you, you have the right at a restaurant to be right. And that's when it's the only time in life. And you can be demeaning. I don't know why people want to be demeaning to a server. You're like, no, like you're not smart. That's why you serve. We don't serve because we're dumb. Actually, dumb people can't serve. Oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. I know no. I can't. Dumb people it's can't serve. Yeah, it, it, it's it's harder than those the, the people who come to the red. Oh, you sir, and we work for tips because we make more money per hour working for tips. Yeah. than we do. Like, when a waiter comes to my table and they take an order without the notepad, I'm like that's an extra ten percent, dude. Whatever. Yeah. 
I was going to give you 20, extra 10% just for what you're doing See, right now. See, now I think that's bullshit because I will take a notepad. I will write down the everything. Is it a no. Okay, but wait. All right, let me follow up. It does have to come back right. It has to come back right. <laughs> okay. But you know what? I write, yeah. I write it down. Because <laughs> your nuggets Like, look, ordered, at, um, look at this guy with, with no notepad. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I want to open a restaurant called We'll Pick. We'll pick for you. Yes. And you come in, you put down your allergies, and then we'll make the rest. It'll be a completely gluten free restaurant because everybody cannot have gluten anymore. I'm going to need to have gluten, gluten free. Oh my God. So I went to a restaurant, a breakfast place. I was so impressed. So impressed. The other day with my sister, who can't eat dairy, I can love to eat dairy. So we're like split eggs. The guy was so nice to us, and we brought her kid. So, you know, you've got the mess. Why can't she eat dairy, dairy, though? I just want to know. She can't. She's got... A, she farts. No, she's got a dairy issue. It's a real serious dairy issue. Yeah. You yeah. know, because most people oh, yeah. have wishes, a dairy allergy, just really fart in the car is really their problem. Dairy. Okay, she okay. She loves it. So she's like, I shit my pants. <laughs> There's that. Yeah, the more. That, one, that one, yeah. So the guy splits our food on test separate plates. So that, that was so nice. And he brings me like a side of cheese and hers with no cheese. It was really nice. It was like, I, wanna, I liked that guy. You know what? I, I, I Honestly, honestly, if, if I was the manager, of that, I would fire that guy. Why? Because it's <laughs> not. It, it, okay. And he told us, because we're like, well, I can get we're this. We're not supposed and we to can do get it. That. Yeah. And he goes, the portions are so big, I recommend you share. Okay, that's he nice. Oh, okay, share. that's a place that shares, and then they normally split it. I like, I'll order this. You can't eat it. I understand. And the guy stops us, and he's like, oh, it's so big. And it was huge. He goes, I recommend sharing. Because the reason I don't like to do that, and the reason I, I didn't do that, if someone asked me that they wanted this split or this, I, you, you get a separate plate. It's, you know what? First, first of all, well, I didn't expect them to split. Yeah, up no, for that's us. that's very that nice really that they nice. did, and it's not. I if that someone, was over the top. yeah, if someone didn't want cheese on it, but so the other person did. We have, I had customers like that, and I'd put the cheese on a separate yeah. plate and let them. But it's there's a guy. Let's call him a chef. Let's just pretend he's a chef. Some people just have cooks, but let's call him a chef. Okay. And he makes a menu, a breakfast menu, mm-hmm. and he writes all these things that he think would be he thinks would be great, and he puts them down on this, okay? And you look at that menu, and then you come in and you say, well, I don't really want this. I want this, but can I get this, and can I get this? Yeah. How about we do this, and we get that? Can you make that? Yeah, the answer is yeah. But if you look at all the ingredients on the menu, I could probably make you fucking tacos, too. But this is a fucking <laughs> breakfast place, and I ain't making you tacos. I'm making you the list that the chef made. You know why I'm making that? Because the guys in the kitchen know how to make that. And then when I don't make what that is and it comes out wrong, you go, hey, that's not what I ordered. I know that's not what you ordered because that's not what we make. You know what we make? All the shit that's written down right here. If you order that and you don't want like some spinach on it or you'd like to add tomato, fine. Fuck yeah, let's do that. But that's don't okay. like start yeah, don't start recreating some shit because that's not what we're here for. Well, I, 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 I can't pull my do own that. menu out of my pocket. <laughs> Can you make this? Yeah, I have people I've been like, working on this. Hey, Ahoaz, I brought the Maggiano's menu with me, yeah. and I will have the spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> the guy, a guy looked at me. The other day. I swear to God, I, I don't understand how I never got fired. This guy goes to me. He goes, he goes, you know, can't you? He goes, what do you mean? You can do that. All, you have all the ingredients, and that's what I said. I said, I have the ingredients to make tacos, dude. I could make tacos, but I ain't making you tacos. Maybe invite him back. Holy make shit. it yourself. Yeah, well, excuse me, that's so funny. Menu. I've never thought of that before. I'm like, yeah, I guess you could. I, you know, but everybody's you could make I anything you want. Everybody has this. I got a note one time. We charged a dollar for salsa at our place for, uh-huh. for freshly made pico. When I say freshly made pico, there's a guy in the back who chops up tomatoes. Right. Chops. He just waits. Yeah, and he, yeah. yeah. No, and it's freshly made pico. You're up. <laughs> I, I never mind paying extra for something. A dollar. Extra, it's a dollar. Ever. Yeah. It's a dollar for one, and we'll bring it. I you got a note on it. I'm paying for food I could make myself. Well, I want another thing. Oh, that's extra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he left a note on there saying that uh, Pico should be free. There should be no charge for Pico. And I thought about it. And so I went over to Safeway just to test this out. Okay. okay. I got my cart. And you just stole And I put, I put tomatoes. <laughs> I put tomatoes. I put garlic on there. Oh, I put some cilantro. And I put it all. And I wheeled up there. And I wheeled up with my stuff in the bottom of the basket uh-huh. and all that stuff on the top of the basket. And I got there and I put it all out. And, she, and then the lady goes, well, I need to charge you for the other stuff. And I go, no, this is Pico. <laughs> this should be free. Free. And she said, no. <laughs> So I have it on on good authority that yeah. Pico is not free. Nor should it be. be. No. I don't mind paying anything oh, extra for something so extra funny. that I ask for. What I do mind is when they go, I'll order something God. extra that's not included. They go, well, that's extra. No shit, it's extra. Yeah, like, but, but they always, not they, some people act like, 
oh, you're not going to want that because it's extra. Well, you no, know, because they've gotten yelled at before. I've got, I've had this guy once said to me, said to me, you didn't tell me that it was going to be a dollar more. I go, you didn't ask, and it's not on it. <laughs> So you might want to assume that if it's something that isn't here and I have to go bring it over here and put it there, that's that there extra. might be a charge for it. And I go, and if you read right here, it says on the menu that it's, that's what that costs. Oh, I'm going to want more nuggets than yeah. what nuggets came. That's going to be extra. Yeah. What? Yes. But I'm You've got to be kidding me, right? I can't. you got to be, really? You're going to charge me extra oh for that? God. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, it's so ridiculous. I cannot. Oh, ask. Working a sandwich at Einstein. Yeah. Better make it two. Yeah, right. Can you make <laughs> that free? Pay for one. Yeah. Can you make that? Can you double that, please? Double it up. Holy shit. Hey, I want a. I, I'd like a small coffee, uh, but I want it in that large cup. Is that going to be extra? No, it's not. Right? Because it's still I'm coffee. Send it back. Still coffee, right? It's all coffee. Oh my god, my face hurts so bad. Because I, I know when you go to. There's, I'll talk about not naming names. There's a girlfriend I won't go out to eat with because she literally sends everything back. It's so embarrassing. I like you fucking ate it. I know, but it was really spicy. I'm like, well, then why did you eat why'd it? Why'd you eat it? Send yeah. it back right away. It's if you don't like it, so send it back right away. All right, hold on. But if you send something back, I don't send much. Is your next order back. getting fucked with? No, it's five not. Sec- no, because half the time, rule. yeah, no, half the time the, the cooks don't even know about it. The server takes care of that, and it just goes. The server takes it off and puts another order. And half the time, the cook doesn't even know about it. Sometimes the cook needs to know about it. Sometimes they did overspice it. Sometimes this is going to get me in so much trouble. Sometimes <laughs> the Hispanic person that is working in the kitchen that day has recently arrived here. And it's not spicy to them yet because <laughs> right. they haven't quite assimilated. You're allowed to say that. I, yeah. No, I'm not. You know why? Yeah. Because, no, you know why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm about as, me- I am as Mexican as I am Irish. I really, <laughs> I'm from here. You're either Irish or I grew not. up here. I, you know, that, that's a different type. When you talk about someone who comes over to this country, and I'm not going to, I don't, I don't, I don't do political stuff, but. When you, come over, when, when you come over to this country and you're, you know, and you're working hard for that job that you're taking from a, an, a hardworking American. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can say that. A Le Cordon Bleu graduate. There, no, there's no one. There's no one working in that kitchen that's working for that price that that guy's coming up here. And no one wants that job. No one right. wants that job. So. But Geraldo had the best joke ever, man. I mean, he had the best bit about. Illegals coming over, and they're like, "Yeah, they're getting that that investment banker job you've been trying for. <laughs> you lost out on that one." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, some dude, things. yeah. Well, then everybody no says, to "Oh, no one's knocking on my door trying no. to pass it out." You you having trouble finding that fantasy where you ride in the back of a landscaping truck with your Ms. Pac Man hat on? <laughs> it's. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, nah, Gerardo, Gerardo was the best, man. Rest in peace. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah, it, you know, it, yeah, those, I, those guys work hard. But you know what? When they first, when, honestly, they don't know what's spicy. I, I've watched some of our cooks in the back. And when they make things, they warn you because they know. After a certain amount of time here, they'll, they'll like, like, you want it spicy or not, or not spicy? Or do you want it like I eat it? And seriously, yeah. like I eat it, it's, that's past spicy. I love it. I love man. spicy. Oh, I can't I'm from here, though, so. So, yeah, yeah if it's, it's too spicy, it. send it back, though, is the whole point of that whole I thing. I love talking about restaurants with you. This is so fun. Because, because it's all negative. I, <laughs> okay, let me, here's the last thing I do want to say this because you brought up, uh, you said dairy. Gluten-free people right now are my, like, uh, seriously, like, I wish this was, when, when did they, like, uh, like burn the witches? Like, if you're gluten Salem? Salem. Yeah, they should go back and they should burn gluten-free, like gluten-free. people that, because, that aren't gluten-free. Because this is my favorite thing that they say to me. What on your menu is gluten-free? Listen, if you really have a gluten allergy, you know it's fucking gluten-free. You know why? <laughs> because you're not going to take a waste your whole day shitting yourself and feeling gross all day long because you didn't know it was gluten-free. You know it's good. What, Someone, the, the thing that I could understand is if gluten-free was like way less calories, but it's not. It's just as fattening as regular pizza dough, and you're already eating pizza. 
So just eat it. My favorite thing, though, is, 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 the, is the gluten-free people who go, don't you have any gluten-free bread? No, I don't have any gluten-free bread. Just don't eat the bread. I don't have any. You know what? I have everything else that you can eat here. I, I'll, I'll, I have corn tortillas. Would you like a substitute corn tortilla? No. I don't want corn. You know what? <laughs> they, they, want, they want me to get that Uggs or whatever mm-hmm. gluten-free bread. That's the boots? Yeah, it's not. This is not. Did no, you say Uggs? It's Uggs or Udi's or something or whatever. I think it's Uggs because every time I've eaten that or tasted it, I go, Ugh. <laughs> Taste terrible. <laughs> Go. You know what? Just if you if you really that if that's you, a trend. If you have it's a trend. Now. If you have an allergy, if you're really sick, you know where you should eat at home. You know what else should be at home? <laughs> your dog. You shouldn't bring your dog to a restaurant. You don't need to bring your dog no, to a I restaurant. Feel about that. You, you know, uh, I some I people. Guess, they don't have a dog from the patio. We are not going. You, you like it. Oh, it's high maintenance. Oh, my God. I, I don't even believe in bringing your dog you, out of You know where a really dog-friendly patio is? Oh, at? you mean you're not going to eat there because people yeah, bring yeah. their I dogs. Like that. I took yeah. it the other way. No. Yeah, no. Like, you if know they don't have the, a dog patio, I'm not going because I bring my dog everywhere. Do you know what the best dog-friendly patio is? You're the one at your fucking house. <laughs> That's the best patio. patio for your dog I agree. ever. I agree. Ever. And it's just to get attention. You, uh, you, I, I hope you're listening right now, whoever it is whoever that's listening you are. you are. You just bring that dog because you need some fucking attention because you're not getting it from where you need it right now. <laughs> that's the only reason. There's a the guy. Truth. Professor. There's a guy on the patio. I, I got to tell you, this restaurant. It's called Morning Squeeze. I'm not going to tell you how I know this. But Sexual there's a guy. harassment no. goes on there like crazy. No, yeah, he's <laughs> not stopped. Yeah. Dude. HR, that's HR. like the highest paying HR job. <laughs> This guy brought his monkey to the patio. <laughs> you only get a monkey because you need monkey attention. A full-grown gorilla, man. Wasn't even a, wasn't even a little guy. <laughs> Do you realize that a monkey like shits every time it lands on someone? So there it is, the monkey with his diaper <laughs> shitting around the restaurant. You know who needs that? Who? Why do you need that? Have a kid. Why? <laughs> a They're only in diapers for a few years. <laughs> Who bring, why you brought a monkey to the patio? Because you wanted people but, to come and talk, talk about your, mon- your monkey. They want you to pet your monkey. Take your other <laughs> monkey out. Take your real monkey out. And see like, if anybody wants to come pet that. My monkey? <laughs> No, so... this is my really Jewish friend Joel. Oh. But my monkey, let, let me pull it out. <laughs> I don't. I, I just don't. I don't get it anymore. I don't get people. I don't. I don't understand them for the most part. I never. I, love, monkey I love how to the patio. you are. You're just so. Did he order a full like meal it. for the monkey? I don't know what he ordered. For the, <laughs> no, he was drinking on the patio. You can't split with the monkey. He can't split with the monkey. He's gluten free. The monkey eats. Gluten. Yeah. Ah, true. Okay, I saw the Jimmy. Does the monkey get kids at the kids' prices on the kids' meal? <laughs> well, Depends I mean, how old the monkey he's in a diaper. Right? He's, he's in a diaper. Yeah. I think that's fair. Because okay, if that's fair, then Booster when seat. your when your when your relatives get really old and they're wearing a diaper, can you bring them for the kids' menu? No, senior citizen discount, bro. No, but yeah, uh, yeah but the kids' menu is even better. Out. No, the that's kids' true. menu is even it works better. Works itself out, though. I don't know. Yeah. I order for the kids' menu all the time. I have a child, but he's not with me all the time. <laughs> to go, <Maybe laughs> to yeah, go. yeah. And then I just sit down at a table with the, in the to go box. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I really enjoy restaurant humor because so many crazy the people <coughs> that me. go and order this gluten free shit. I just oh, I've had it, and I'm kind of a picky eater, but it, but I'm not you know what? an asshole. No, you know what? I have some really picky people, and it's okay to be picky. But tell me, you know, just go like this. Listen, I'm really picky. I know I'm a problem. This is what I need, and you tell me what it is, and if I can accommodate it, I will. And you know what? The pickiest people I've found, if I say, hey, I can't do this, but I can do this, they'll go, okay, that's what, that will work. Or the, they, they understand. They're, they're willing to work with you because they understand that this is not how it works. Okay. I, uh, what is it? Jimmy Kimmel. I can't remember. Did Fallon or Kimmel. One of the two did a Tonight Show, and he's interviewing Fallon? all these people that were hiking, and they were in L.A., and he's like, are you gluten-free or not? Oh, 90% of them were gluten-free. And he goes, what's gluten? One of them knew. <laughs> One of them knew what it is. Someone asked us That's if our cool. bacon was gluten-free. No, I don't know. What, <laughs> no, I don't know what gluten is. I'd be one of those. It's I don't wheat. Know what it is. It's, it's a wheat. It's like a wheat. A yeah. That binds. Yeah. I'm not together. gluten-free. It's a wheat. It's a wheat, it's a wheat protein. I add gluten. I'm like gluten, what's the anything plus. they passed on? Let's put that into mind. <laughs> <I'm gluten plus. laughs> like a side of yeah, gluten. You got that extra and I'm gluten. Not pay a dollar for it. <laughs> I put extra gluten on everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to go around now. Tons of gluten now. <laughs> everything well, not being used. Because everybody's you know saying no. So good, more for me. I'll eat. Yeah. It. I'll eat it all day. I don't care. <laughs> I like uh, the, the the other one that the, the people were doing. Um, what was it that they, they wanted something gluten? I, I can't even remember what this was. Oh, because they have uh, no butter because they don't want any butter. I'm allergic to butter now. 
butter is a big one because they oh, don't want really? you people yeah. for years have been allergic to butter <laughs> no that's a joke nobody's allergic to butter wait wait is it a dairy it's a dairy okay, issue the same person's gonna go uh no butter inside a ranch yeah uh, yes that's what they did that's, that's what, what they did yeah no yeah <laughs> They've they've ordered or they want it um, or I want my potatoes extra crispy. You know we make those on a grill with butter. If you have a, an allergy, there's yes, a difference. You, know. you can tell but a person yes. They I go, want. I have a, a dairy one. allergy. Yes. I have an allergy to this, and they're very concerned about it. Right, they're and, not trending. Yeah, right? because they're worried that they're going to make a trip okay. to the hospital. I'm going to tell you right. a funny story. They pull their epipen out while they order. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the peanut allergy. That's how they that. sign how, their check. Uh, I went to breakfast with some girlfriends, and it was the day of the other girl's wedding, whatever. This comes into play. So the girl has a serious mushroom allergy. She's like, okay, I just Fake name them so we know who you're talking about. Marsha, Bob, and Sue. Okay, now who's getting married? Bob. I don't know. I can't do that. I'm just trying all to... all girls. Well, so, why'd you name one Bob? Because, <laughs> trust right. me, I'm just kidding. Because you know Big her. Because you know her. <laughs> so she's like, I have a Very severe well. mushroom allergy. Just the oh, omelet. Courtney. No. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No mushrooms. So she goes, when she gets her food, she just to make sure there's no mushrooms in it. Well, she found mushroom, whatever. So she tells, the owner like walks up and she's like, what's the problem? She's like, oh, mushroom, you know. She goes, well, it looks like you ate half of it. She's like, well, no, I mean, I just picked through it because. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure because it's severe and, you know, whatever. So the lady takes her food and then brings it back. And there was, like, she just dumped it and just brought back eggs. And it came with, like, breakfast potatoes, which is important when you're eating breakfast. The little potatoes. Yeah. So she's just like, oh, well, can I have the potatoes, too? Because you just, you know, only brought me my eggs back. And the lady's like, I don't know how it came up that we were going to a, in a wedding later that night. Billy's her husband. <laughs> so she's like, oh, well, I don't know why you want potatoes. You guys are in a wedding, like just all bitchy and mean. She goes, I can go get your potatoes out of the trash can. This is the oh, owner shit. of the restaurant. This is the egg I am over here. <laughs> oh, I love I that so, place. I love that place too. I mean, I still go there. I don't care, but I was like, whoa. Like, that was a real situation. Well, I'm not going to go there now. An yeah. allergy. But she was really mean about it. She was really mean about it, and, and she shouldn't have been that, that, that. Honestly, that sounded like a kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of thing to be. But, uh, but for sure. But this is not the rest. It's the restaurant owner's fault because she was the restaurant owner. But the problem is, is the people that are ordering these make believe things right. have made. Us, not the people who work in the industry, yeah. made us feel like it's not important anymore because it's not real. So they've taken away something that's very serious, and for a few people, it's very serious, mm -hmm. and they've just put a blanket across the board, so we have a hard time taking it seriously. Oh, I agree. And and that really too. is the problem. I would too. The, and people are messing it up for other people, yeah. and that's that's really life right there. Well, people one of are my messing kids it up for claims to just is so positive she's allergic to tomatoes, yet she puts ketchup on everything. So. I really think that she's <laughs> allergic to tomatoes. And I try and explain it to her. She's like, oh, no, I'm allergic to tomatoes. They make me turn red every time I eat them. But then yeah, because it gets all over her face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wipe your face. Is it a raw tomato that she has a problem with? Yeah. It's, it, it's probably the high acid content in the tomato that's making her, uh, like, almost feel like she's gagging. It's not an allergy. Go on. But it's the high. <laughs> yeah, it's the high. Uh, it's the high acid. I can't okay, eat a raw well, tomato, but I can eat a sauce. Or right, I can eat right. Like that. That's what it is. So we just don't give her so, tomatoes and everybody's yeah. happy. Try giving her, give her some tomato juice and see if she has the same effect. If it's the same effect, it's high acid. Is she acid. walking diagonal? Yeah. <laughs> She's all like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanted to tell a story real quick. Um, one of my very good friends that you know. Is in town, and so she came over today to meet my dog. She was on the show. Yeah, she was on She's the show. She's been on the show a long time ago, though. Yeah. That was our South Africa episode yes. when uh, Nelson Mandela died. Yeah, that's right. That was and we got her on to talk yeah. about Mandela. That was a great episode. Yeah. So she came over today to meet my new dog, and I was just like, you know, this dog, he's crazy. I love him, but I just feel like he's just kind of something's funny about him, and she's, like, very spiritual, and she's messing with him, and she says, I think your dog was once a really large black man, and he just needs to, like, run more. Oh, like, I'm she not... wasn't weird like this on the podcast, guys. No, no, no. I think she was just telling me, like, <laughs> he's really, like, a big person in a tiny body, and you need to take him out and run him more. I don't know. Do you I'll tell that? you this. You know For the dog. 12 hours he was at my house, he was a fucking asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I was just curious because you know my dog. If you got that vibe from him, like he needs to like get out there. That he's a big black man. Or, like, cut his gluten or something. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. I have a white dog and a brown dog. You want anything to do with either one? And they're both women. So I don't think yeah. he was a black guy. Not at all. I don't think so. Okay. My white dog's got fat ass. <laughs> Well, I think that's why he likes me so much. He's just like, ooh, morning squeeze. No, I don't think so. I don't know. He's a young dog. He's super energetic. Well, I think your friend that we both know is weird as shit. And it's just a dog. Maybe, I'm not maybe, into that other, maybe. oh, in a previous life kind of thing. I don't, are you into that shit, Andy? Reincarnation, no. No? Hmm. no. Like you were something in a previous life? and thought you'd have more to say about that. I don't know. I don't. I know the dog. The dog's a crazy ass dog. That's why I pawned him on you. He's but, looking crazy. <laughs> I love him though. You took a picture of him with you the other day. Yeah. And posted like a, it, a and Facebook. he was smiling he with smiles. his teeth. He's it was so nuts. funny. He's cool. But Do you he's have a like dog? Crazy. No, I don't have a dog right now. Do you have cats? I, I know I don't have. Thank I hate, God. I, Any I animals? Hate, no, I don't. My my two kids. Bless you. <laughs> I hate cats. I'm sorry to anybody else. I hate cats. I no, everybody we, we knows our stance on this show. Cats. Fucking hate cats. Yeah. They're just. It, it's not necessary. No, they're awful. What to house a wild animal? Yeah. Well, okay. This is even worse. Okay, over at, over at Raw though. Back to where I told mm-hmm. you. If you go in the alley behind Raw, there's a bunch of crazy people that used to work in those all the restaurants that are back there. There's a bunch of restaurants right in that same area, and they all fed cats. So there's feral cats all over oh, there at shit. night. I left my sunroof open one night, and I in like a family moved in, and then I went to op- turn on my open my car up with the the alarm, the little you know pad, yeah, and the lights went on. And these cats just freaked out, and they knew that how they got in, but they didn't know how to get out anymore. They were just running around my my truck, just like tearing up my car. Oh. And there was this cat hair over, and I'm highly allergic to it. I was like sure. so grossed out. Sure. And ever since then, I cannot stand cats. I am really allergic to it. My my dad's worse. My, I have these like Jew lungs. And my dad, <laughs> my, my dad even comes into a house that has cats, and he he takes a trip to the hospital. He's done for the day. Oh my god, that's Shit. terrible. Yeah. Well, a lot of people allergic wow. to cats. Which is maybe a sign that we're not supposed to live indoors with cats. Or eat them. Oh, yeah, don't eat yeah, them. Yeah, don't put them on the I menu because there's going to be people who have cat allergies. Anymore. So not yeah. eat them. Too bad. I, I have a really tasty tiger back in my house. It's delicious. <laughs> medium rare? Is that what you guys mean? No, no gluten. I don't know. I don't know what was in them. But I got them from the zoo. You need to try lion. <laughs> rare. Hey, last time I was to the zoo, the lion roared. If you've never been near a lion that roars, you don't know. That shit is loud. Pet friendly patio. And see Holy a lion to roar at shit, you. man. What were you doing at the zoo? I was with my son. You were just taking for a little, yeah, little zoo? Yeah, yeah, Recently, yeah. right here at the Phoenix Zoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Phoenix Zoo is the worst. But it's terrible. We went. Monkey, monkey cage is good. The monkey. I like the Oh, they the have, yeah. But they weren't out. Oh, That's weren't. the yeah, we went. We went pretty early. But the lion woke up from, uh, from where they sleep the entire fucking day. Every time I've been there, the lions and tigers are sleeping. But the lion woke up and was like, I got something to say, and roared, and it, like, goes through, vibrates through your body. It's really? so loud. Yeah. It was cool as it. shit. I so, hate the zoo. But you, you don't, you're not a reincarnation. Are you reincarnated? You believe? No. no. But if you could be, re- if you were. I think I'm Abraham Lincoln. What, what would you, besides that, besides a person, what would you <laughs> want to come back as? Yeah, you could come back as anything. If I can come back as something? Yeah. Anything besides a person. I okay. was going to say, play myself. <laughs> nah, probably something close to that, I guess. I don't know. A gorilla. Um, <laughs> those red monkey gorillas, those red ass gorillas, I think are pretty funny. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely something that I wouldn't have to wipe my ass after I shit. So I, I do a lot of that. I would probably be a gorilla or like, man, what lives long? I like life. A tiger shark? Those don't live long, do they? That's what I would be. You can a tiger by shark? Anything oh, in yeah. there. Tiger sharks are like the killers. What about a big kills whale? Tiger sharks. Males are friendly, though. Yeah. You have to go and I'd be mess all huge. with the whale. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't pick up chicks. What would you be? I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it right now. I was, yeah. I was just curious. Okay, I said tiger shark because I saw this article. I'd be a lamp. A lamp so everyone can turn <laughs> you on. <laughs> <laughs> you like, oh, lamp. look who just <laughs> came <laughs> home. Turn me off. Touch lamp. Turn touch me lamp. off. Mm, he'd be this. <laughs> Clapper. <laughs> I'm a genie. <laughs> Rub um, my lamp. There was an article, and then it turned in, like, you click on the link, and it's a video. And it was a tiger shark. This guy, like, met this tiger shark when the tiger shark was, like, young. And he was, like, rubbing his belly and stuff, like, treating it all nice, like, giving it love. And then they tag it. And then he found this same tiger shark. 
15 years later, and he tried like rubbing his belly again, and the shark just like loves it. He just comes back for more. So then the guy and him kind of swim off together, and the guy's like, oh shit, I gotta get back to my camera. So he swims back, the shark comes back, and it's just like loving on him. It's on, I don't know, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes. It was so cool. No, I've heard about, they just did a thing on 60 Minutes with a guy with lions. Oh, and, yeah, and he gives him a hug. Yeah. You think he's and the lions, like, him, love the dude. Him. Yeah. Love it. It's crazy. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I don't, even if I had a baby lion, and it was like a puppy dog, right? And it was mm-hmm. totally loving on me, and, like, we totally got along, and as a group, we got along, and then it's out in nature. By the time it got to be lion size. I'd still be fucking scared lion. that that lion's about to go lion on me. Like it's barrel, <laughs> just go be normal. Just yeah. Go lion. Oh shit! It bit me. Weird. You're acting like yourself. Right. That's not That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're looking like a pussy in front of your friends, just walking next yeah. to me. Go ahead and take a chomp. Orangutans look like they have a lot of fun, and they're affectionate. I want to be something affectionate because I need people. I would say a dog, but that'd be boring. Even if you have an active family, it's like, hey, let's go take a yeah, run. Dude, I'm lazy. Well, what if you're, you, you're, you're a cattle dog? And you're like, you know, still like a ranch dog. And it smells like shit all day. Yeah, what if, what if I'm a lazy dog? What if I'm me as a dog? <laughs> all I want to do is lay on the couch and you're watch like TV. My other dog. A bulldog. A bulldog. Oh, I'd be it. the greatest bulldog of all English time. Mastiff, no bulls. 13. That's... <laughs> I would be the greatest English bulldog of all time. There you go. Oh, I'd be hilarious. You'd find your calling. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Maybe. That's what I'd be. It's not too late. Oh, my God. <laughs> <You> could, <laughs> oh, I can't wait, dude. Mm-hmm. <sighs> you gotta put in that request. I'll do those skateboarding and surfing videos. Fuck it. I'll even yeah. shoot some hoops. But I will be the greatest English bulldog of all time. What would you name yourself? Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick your animal? No, I said I would pick my animal. <sighs> I have a hard time with the... Uh, would you be a bird? Some sort I of bird? I have thought that, but I haven't really... I don't know. It just seems kind of like... Like a bald eagle? A so they can't kill you? Oh, oh, cool. I always think like it's raining. Oh, now I don't want to be a bird. Now I want to be something Yeah, that else. would suck, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. You know, uh, who was it? Uh, Todd Glass has the best thing about birds. He goes, why do, they, why do birds live in shitty neighborhoods? <laughs> why would they? Why would they? Why would they just... Why would they right, just like fly? you're not born. You're yeah. born in this life. Like you can, you can leave. Yeah, you can fly. You can fly yeah. to another. Holy like, shit, go, go fly funny. to a great neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ain't got a telephone wire. You can literally <laughs> park your your, your home really in anywhere. the backyard of a million dollar house. I would yeah. want to be like, that's awesome. My bird. I'd want to be my. Damn bird. it, dude! It. I get it's so like nice jealous patio. when I, when I hear someone like so, that. So just, God, it's so just, easy. Just like you know, you just looked up and you go like just that 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 thought. I'd be a raccoon. I think I th- just because I, th- I I think I like the bandit. I like the bandit look that it has, yeah, and cool I think look. it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and they look nice. Digging through garbage. That's the life for you. They're play. They're they're playful with them, with each other, but they're fucking dicks. Sometimes so. rabbit. You gotta watch out for those rabies. That's yeah. like an animal having STDs. <laughs> I've got rabies. <laughs> so watch out for that. All right. <laughs> well, I think rabies is about the time we need to wrap up. We do. We, we got to get oh, out of here. But shit. We've been here Andy, for a while. <laughs> Andy, thank you so, so much for coming. Yeah, I've been, fun. I've been telling you forever, dude. I got to get you in. We got yeah, to, we got to have conversations. So far, we, and we got, we got restaurants. We got restaurants wrapped up. We know, we know that. What? People... How not to act? <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about it. I just, it just makes me so angry. I'm just you guys, so angry. listen to me. When you see that Andy's on a show, go because he's one of the funniest fucking. Comedians Unless it's open mic, because I'm going to do something really. Like, yeah, don't don't do the open mic stuff. Do but new. I don't know. I don't ever promote those. Go to the legit shows that Andy's on. You will you'll die laughing. He's one of the funniest comedians I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of comedians, a lot, sixteen years worth. And I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, there's, now there's actually a lot of people funny. But either way, Andy, look, you're great. No, no, I'm just kidding. Andy is exceptional. He's one of my favorites, and he's a pro's pro, dude. You're, you're awesome. And Thanks, I love man. That's Thank nice you of you. I appreciate in. that. Thanks. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you for coming in. Nancy. Thank you. You're the coolest lady I've ever met in my Aww. life. That's not true. Nice. You guys. <laughs> <It's not> true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Have a good week. We love you, and take care. This has been another great presentation of the Four-Eyed Radio Network. You can catch more shows at foureyedradio.com.